Hi and welcome to the second of our food vlogs from Shoe Catering. Uh, we're here today in my house uh, because I want to talk about what we're going to do with the food left on your plate from your Sunday roast. We have some food left over. Here it is, the actual food. Okay, so um, in here I've got some potatoes and carrots and um, cauliflower. I'm just going to turn that out. The key component in this one will be the cauliflower cheese. I need something to bind it. If you don't have that, then you want maybe a little bit of milk and cheese. Okay, we've got sprouts in here and they probably won't work, so let's pull them out. Potatoes will need to be quite well chopped, and if there's some really sort of dryish bits, just we'll lose them. But the rest of it, just want to roughly chop this up. So what I want to do now is just mash this up and again, like I've talked about before, the best tool in the kitchen is your hands, as long as they're clean. So now you've got a really good moulded piece of food there that we can do all sorts of stuff with. Now some people will make bubble and squeak cakes out of this and what I thought about was maybe do something a little bit different. Now I love arancini and those are little rice balls, you'll see them in Italians. So why don't we do something like that with this? We've got our uh, leftover vegetables now and they're ready to be made into the uh, bubble and squeak balls, I'm going to call them. Um, but they will need some more flavour in these, so there'll be a bit of a cheese and cream flavour, which is fine, but you could add some more uh, heat to this with some chilli flakes or some Cajun jerk spice. I'm going to put a bit of herb oil in it, which is just some of my fresh herbs chopped with a little bit of olive oil. Okay, I'm going to mix that up, and then we're going to do a bit of egg and uh, bread crumbs. Darren's top tip. So if I've got some leftover bread, or it's a bit dry, and I just blitz it down in the blender, and then just bag it up and freeze it. That means there's no waste then, and you can get them out as and when you're doing any sort of bread crumbing, and hopefully from after this recipe we're doing lots of it. And I'll just give that a microwave now, just uh, on its low heat for about a minute, and it all softens up. Darren's top tip. I'm going to make these quite small now, um, a little bit smaller than say a ping pong ball, because the, the bread crumbs and the uh, eggs will add another layer to it. It's quite important, this gets a really good mix because you don't want big sort of, you'll see when I do it, you still get some sort of big into bits of the egg white. The more you can beat it, the better. So just get a coating of the egg on it and try and use one hand for wet, like the egg, and one for dry with the breadcrumbs. So I do two or three at a time and then I just shake the whole dish. So I'll let them get coated around in it. I keep this hand away because it just ends up covered in breadcrumbs itself, it's like breadcrumb fingers. Okay, so you can see now, you can do them lightly coated, that's one coat, or you can just give them another quick douse and you get quite a good crispy coat in there. So I'm going to take these to a live cooking demonstration this afternoon and we'll see how they go down there. So the easiest way to cook your bubble and squeak balls is in your little fryer at home if you have one, but if not, um, you can do it in a pan like I am here, so about an inch and a half of cooking oil, uh, nice and hot. Just keep them turning over so they go brown all over and they won't take long, a couple of minutes and I'd serve these with some mixed leaves and uh, a bit of sweet chilli sauce or garlic mayonnaise and as I said people just won't believe this was the, uh, the leftover roast tea from the day before. Okay so the other part of the roast that we had left over was a little piece of the beef left. What I'm going to do with that is I'm going to break it up and we're going to use that for like pub meat, so you could put it in a burger or you could uh, put it into a wrap and that's what we'll do today. So I've got the end piece of the beef, this is beef brisket. I'm just going to slice it roughly. Okay, I'm going to put it in this little oven tray. I'm going to add some sauce now to that. So it's an oil based, so then it'll cook in the oven and it's dead simple, it's stuff you've already got in your cupboard. Some olive oil or just general, normal sort of vegetable oil is fine. And then a couple of your uh, standard sauces, other brands are available. I don't measure it out, but we're talking around about three parts amount of ketchup, one part brown sauce, and that gives us a barbecue sauce. And this is great, it's got a bit of spice in it as well, so a little bit of chilli, and you could put a bit of Henderson's in there, or the Perrins if you're not from Sheffield. And you'll see it goes glassy because of the olive oil. And that's it, simple as that. So we put that in the beef. You might find if you're doing this with pork, you wouldn't need the olive oil really because you've got a lot of um, a lot of natural oil and fat in the pork itself, but not in brisket. We haven't, or not in this piece anyway. I'll tin foil that. There's the tin foil I've done before, and I give that around about an hour in the oven. And a key part to this, this is a food safety message. This is to serve and eat straight away. 
okay, so don't put it in and think that's ready for tea later tonight. No, because we're cooking it the second time, let's eat it straight away. It's just okay, so I'm gonna put that in the oven now for about an hour and a half. Okay, so the beet's been in there for an hour and a half now, so I'm gonna get that out. So that's great, that's sizzling. And the sauce is reduced down, it's gonna be really great flavour now. What we're gonna do is we're gonna do uh, like a garlic wrap for that. And uh, I'm gonna use the magic dough that I've talked about in one of my other vlogs. And so you'll have to check that out to, to follow this part. Okay, so uh, I'm going to put the beef in here. And then I've also got uh, a little bit of piccalilli coleslaw. So and it's just the cabbage and carrot chopped up and a bit of red onion and then some pickle lily sauce just in the supermarket and I also like to put a little bit of cauliflower in and that'll give us a lovely crunch to this and the pickle lily, the little bit of heat from that just goes great with the beef. Okay, so roll that up. There's something a little bit more original than a beef sandwich on Monday. Okay, let's try it. Yeah, it's good. Mm.